Simon, you were here now for two days with the AGA of the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development. What is WTO doing at country level that would be of interest to all the members here that are congregated at the AGA? Well, I'm with the, the Enhanced Integrated Framework, um, which is a, a partnership um, that is currently hosted at the WTO, but it's a membership of um, 23 bilateral donors as well as um, a number of other international agencies such as the World Bank, uh, UNDP, UNCTAD, ITC, uh, UNIDO um, and others. Um, and as uh, part of this partnership we implement um, systems and projects in least developed countries. So we're active in 50 countries across the world, all the, the poorest countries in the world. Um, and our main ethos is um, using trade as a tool for development in these countries. Um, at the country level, um, it's very much a country-owned and country-driven initiative where we support each of these countries to establish um, inter, um, inter-ministerial, inter um, donor dialogue mechanisms to better coordinate initiatives um, as well as implementation initiatives often through the ministries of trade where they then link with ministries of agriculture and other trade related initiatives. Um, so in every country we've got a key contact point and a team that will be looking at projects across the board. Um, now through the EIF itself, we have a, a trust fund where we implement a number of projects in these countries ourselves, as well as providing a platform for engagement of bilateral support, which is the major initiative that we, we focus on. Um, of the projects that we do ourselves through our trust fund, um, over half of them, ha over half of the major projects that we do are actually focused on agriculture or rural development initiatives. Um, so I think there's a lot of scope for collaboration um, amongst many of the, the donors and the agencies and members of the global platform in the work that goes on in these countries. Maybe you can give us an example where it works, why it works, how it works. Sure. Um, in a country that I, I know well, um, in Lao PDR, um, in Asia, there, is a common, there was a common diagnostic study that was done. It's called the Diagnostic Trade Integration Study that um, we do in all the EIF countries. Now, a couple of um, donors decided to look at supporting this initiative from the start um, through to the end, um, and they established a multi-donor trust fund in the country to implement the priorities that emerged from this diagnostic study. Um, these priorities covered a number of areas from accession to the WTO to sector interventions in areas like agriculture and um, looking at promoting silk production, for example, um, looking at um, promoting linkages between uh, smallholder farmers in the horticulture area and local um, hotels and restaurants. Um, and through this trust fund, some of these initiatives were started and momentum was also built with other bilateral partners to fund other areas um, that were not funded through, through the, the multi-donor trust fund. And then on top of that now through the EIF, we have um, an initiative where we're supporting the technical standards um, in the country as well. I just want to bring it back to the whole aid for trade discussion. How do you see it? Is trade really an alternative to aid to handing out money for free which aid essentially is is it a better alternative i think through the eif what we've recognized is that it needs to go hand in hand um, there's an increasing role for trade in the development um, of many many countries and this is is borne out through experience when we look back at many of the countries the poorer countries that have leveraged and pulled themselves out of um, the the status that they were in a few decades ago um, often there's been a lot of a role of trade in that um, but for many countries it's not enough just to open up trade they need support 
to be able to develop the products, to be able to develop the systems to trade. And that's where aid for trade and initiatives like this come in, where it's so critical to link initiatives that are supporting agriculture development to the markets and the broader um, economic development agenda in, in countries. Um, so I, I don't think that they are necessarily exclusive as they um, as some sometimes might be thought. I think there are many linkages between the two and that trade is often an essential arm actually to the development initiatives. Many agriculture development initiatives are looking at production and at the end of that day the production is linked to markets somewhere be they national markets or regional cross-border markets or international markets. And it's that whole chain, I think, that, that works together in, in a cycle and that's where successful development um, and successful projects come in. What is your message to all the agriculture donors congregated here at the AGA? What would you want them to focus on in 2015? I think there's, there's a lot um, that is obviously happening right now. Um, on the rural development, on the agriculture side. Um, and there's a lot that's happening from the trade side in many of these areas as well. Trade is actually, it is, it is agriculture, it is manufacturing, it is, it's, it's through the sectors that trade happens. Um, and so to link up the various initiatives in the countries um, where the work is happening is, is really critical and I think that will lend success to, um, to all the, the various initiatives that are going on right now. Thank you very much. Thank you.